Hey there, Lisa here. Welcome to my channel. I hope you'll join me in my love of crafting and DIYs and hit that subscribe button. Today's video is part of the napkin challenge. This is hosted each month by Sarah at Sunflowers and DIY. Her channel will be linked below as well as the playlist with everyone else taking part in this challenge. So let's craft our stash of napkins. For DIY number one, I took these wood rounds that I had gotten on Amazon. These are the three inch size. I would recommend the four inch if you're going to recreate this. And the first thing I did off camera was paint them all white. And now what I am doing is applying Mod Podge to all four of them. And you want, you know, a pretty good coat. Nice, even coat is the best. And we are going to apply the Mod Podge again to all four of these coasters is what we're making. And then we are going to let it dry. Next, we are going to take our napkin of choice and you wanna make sure that you remove the back plies. Some of them are two, three, four ply. So make sure that you remove all of the white layers. All you want is the top decorative layer. And we are going to lay these out on top of our dried wood rounds. Next, we are going to take some parchment paper and a mini press. You can use a mini iron, um, a regular sized iron, whatever you have on hand. And we are going to iron this napkin down to the wood round. And the heat reactivates that Mod Podge and it gives you a nice smooth finish. We will take the scissors and trim around the edges and repeat the process for the other coasters that we are making. To get the edges good and clean, what we are going to do is take a fingernail file and we are going to sand in a downward motion to get all of the excess tissue paper cleaned off of there. Now to seal these coasters, we are going to use resin. And this is a two part epoxy resin. We have part A and part B. And what you do is you pour equal parts of A to equal parts of B, and then you mix them together for three to five minutes. And you can kind of tell as you're mixing them together, it goes from a milky consistency to a real clear consistency. And that means it's ready to go. So once you've mixed your resin to the required consistency, you are simply going to pour it over the top of our coasters. Now I have done this two ways. Um, the first way was I just laid it flat and poured it. This way I have them up on some cups and I am going to tell you that I prefer the flat method than I do to the cup method. So when this drips down the sides, it actually went underneath, which means that I had a ton of sanding to do and so if you if you lay them flat you it pulls around the sides and you can easily cut that off so I would recommend lying them flat or sticking them to some resin tape versus doing it this way now this is just my preference so anyways we are just going to pour this resin over the top of all four of the coasters then to remove any air bubbles that you get in the resin, I use a barbecue lighter. You can use, um, some people prefer a heat gun or like a blow dryer, but this seems to work the best for me. So I just do it close to the resin, but not touching the resin. And this just pops any air bubbles that have formed. My husband came to the rescue with a grinding attachment on his drill to take off the resin on the bottom. Now, once this had cured for the allotted time, I had lots of resin underneath from that pour method. Now, I'm not sure if there's a better way to do that or not. The only way I can think is to just lie it flat. So theoretically, you would be skipping this step and the next one. So the next step is I did put on a mask because resin dust is not something that you want to be breathing in. And I am just taking a sanding square and then I'm just sanding it down smooth. Um, the grinder got the majority of it, but I'm just, like I said, I'm just sanding it down smooth. And I apologize. I keep going off camera here. I am not used to recording in this room. Next, I took this cork that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just cut it in. I just took and traced one of the wood rounds onto it 
and then cut those out. I apologize, I did this off camera apparently, or I lost the footage. You can also buy already cut rounds on Amazon. So if that's something that you would prefer to do, that works as well. Finally, to complete our coaster, we are going to take and stick our cork to the back. And this cork is self-adhesive, so it's just as easy as applying a sticker. You just trim it up to the size and then pull it apart and just stick it to the back. Super easy. For DIY number two, I took this same cherry napkin. And what I am doing here is I am cutting out a circle that is the size of that bezel that you see laying down there on the desk. And so I had made a little template just with a piece of paper. And so I had traced that around here. You can also just trace the bezel. And then I am cutting out my napkin. And so we're gonna do, um, I end up doing two of these. So next you just apply a coat of Mod Podge. And once you have the Mod Podge in there, then you just lay down your napkin and smooth it out and make sure that you get it good up along those edges as well. If you have a little bit of overhang, that's okay. We'll take care of that in the next step. So just smooth it out and get it stuck down in there as good as you can. I had a little bit of overhang on this one, so I just took my fingernail file and just sanded it off so that I had a nice clean edge. Next, we are going to go out into my sunroom and we are going to mix resin. So the resin that I'm using, um, there is two parts. So you have part A and part B and you want to mix them at a 50-50 ratio. So basically you want the same amount of each. So I have filled one cup with portion A and now I'm filling the second cup with portion B. Then we are going to pour them together. Um, we'll take a little um, popsicle stick and we will scrape out the sides. And then what you do is you stir this for three to five minutes together until your milky consistency goes away and you have a nice clear epoxy to work with. Once you have stirred for three to five minutes, you take your bezel and then you take your epoxy and we are just simply going to pour the epoxy right on top of the bezel and you pour until you get a little bit of a bubble over it and then you stop. Now these are pretty easy <laughs> to over pour. Um, these should actually be stuck down to tape in case you do over pour them. That will keep the resin from sticking to the back of the bezel. Unfortunately, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> and so I am doing it wrong here, but you would want to lay this down on some resin tape. And then you take and with a barbecue lighter, um, a heat gun, blow dryer, whatever you got, and you are just going to heat up any air bubbles to get them to pop. Then you will set it aside to dry. This cures in 24 to 48 hours. You wanna make sure that you are at a steady 75 or plus degrees when you are doing resin, or it may not cure properly. Um, I actually have a resin heater because I live in a cold climate. All right, let's take a look. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to preface this by saying that pouring resin is a learned skill. It is not easy initially. So I am going to show you some of the things that went wrong. So here you got, it's really hard to tell on camera, but it didn't pour quite to the edge. And on the back, there's some globs, which is why I end up only finishing two of these. Now I can fix those by going back over and pouring again and then sanding the back like I did these two and adding cork and I may finish those as well but for the sake of this video I just wanted to get a couple done so that you could see them done and then here we go here are the bezels that we did this one I'm showing you that it's it didn't bubble up it actually over poured and on the back here is a bunch of resin again I can sand this off and pour another coat of resin and possibly save this bezel but I didn't have time to before the video and so here I'm showing you the one that did take better and it's nice and bubbled 
Um, but there is an air bubble right smack dab in the middle, which I know is also hard to see on camera. So I just wanted to show you those things to encourage you to keep trying because resin does take some time to get used to. So here we go. Here is a close up look of the coasters and what the finished product looks like. And then here is a close up look of the bezel. And I'm showing you here where that air bubble is which is so unfortunate because the rest of it poured really nice. It's a little bit not level because my table isn't level. Um, resin is picky, resin is picky. But I encourage you to give it a shot. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. Truly appreciate each and every one of you viewers. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.